Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a key microeconomic concept known as the economies of scale. With that said, let's get right into it. All right, so let's start off answering perhaps the most important question you're wondering. What are economies of scale? Well, put in simple terms, economies of scale are cost advantages attained by companies when their production becomes more efficient. Companies can achieve economies of scale by increasing production and lowering costs, and this is possible since the costs are spread over a larger number of goods. Does that sound confusing? Allow me to explain. The size of the business often matters when it comes to economies of scale. The larger the company, the more the cost savings. Economies of scale can be both internal and external. Internal economies of scale are based on management decisions, including things like accounting, information technology, and marketing, while external has to do with the outside factors like the cost of acquiring labor or intermediate goods to be used in production. Economies of scale are an important concept for all businesses and all industries. It explains why large companies oftentimes have a competitive advantage over smaller companies. Have you ever wondered why a smaller business charges more for a similar or even identical product sold by a larger company? That's because the cost per unit depends on how much the company produces as well as how much it costs them to produce. Larger companies can produce more by spreading the cost of production over a larger amount of goods and an industry may also be able to dictate the cost of a product if several different companies are producing similar goods within the industry. Now, there are three main reasons why economies of scale have led to lower per unit costs. First, specialization of labor and more integrated technology boosts output volumes. Second, lower per unit costs can come from bulk orders from suppliers as well as lower costs of borrowing capital from banks or other loan providers. Third, spreading internal function costs across more units produced and sold helps to reduce costs. A company can create a diseconomy of scale when it becomes too large and chases an economy of scale, but we'll give an example of that in just a second. As a dramatic example of economies of scale, think of a smartphone. How much money do you think it would cost for you? Yes, you, the person watching this video right now, to build a single smartphone all by yourself. Well, after considering the cost of hardware, materials, and the knowledge you'll need to achieve such a feat, I'm willing to bet the cost is somewhere in the ballpark of quite a lot of money. Definitely more than the five to $600 range that it costs Apple or Samsung. But why does it cost you so much more to make? Well, in this example, it's quite obvious. You don't have the parts, the manufacturing capabilities, and likely the expertise to make smartphones as efficiently as these companies do. So while they're pumping out hundreds of millions of smartphones each year and raking in a hefty profit per individual phone, you're probably in debt just from creating one all by yourself. What about diseconomies of scale? Restaurant kitchens are often used to illustrate how economies of scale are limited. More cooks in a small space get in each other's way and become less efficient. This is the case even though intuitively more cooks should equal more output. Have you ever heard of the phrase, too many cooks spoils the broth? Well, this is more or less what that saying is getting at. Economies of scale are advantages that sometimes occur as a result of increasing the size of a business. For example, a business might enjoy an economy of scale concerning its bulk purchasing. By buying a larger number of products at once, it could negotiate a lower per unit price than its competitors, as buying in bulk often results in a discounted price per unit. Put simply, economies of scale can be achieved in two ways. First, a company can realize internal economies of scale by reorganizing the way their resources, such as equipment and personnel, are distributed within the company. That is, making the company more internally efficient results in larger profit margins. Second, a company can realize external economies of scale by growing in size relative to their competitors and then using that increased size to engage in competitive practices such as negotiating discounts for bulk purchases. Economies of scale are important because they help provide businesses with a competitive advantage in their industry. Companies will therefore try to realize economies of scale whenever possible, just as investors will try to identify economies of scale when selecting investments. This will lead to companies striving to become more and more efficient, which is generally good for the economy and the markets as a whole. We hope that this video helped you to understand the concept of economies of scale. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and commenting what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.